Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature and I just thought I would pop in, give you a bit of love. I know I haven't uh, been doing many Facebook Lives this, this week. Uh, it's been a crazy week in my clinic and uh, I just wanted to check in and see how you're all doing. And also, um, just pique your curiosity a little bit about this whole nurture by nature thing or I can't remember what I titled this. Um, you are that that whole um, idea that you are you what you think you become, and what your your comments and questions are uh, uh, around uh, around that. You know, what if you are you are not your thoughts? What if you don't become what you think? And um, I couldn't sleep last night. Uh, I was kind of tossing and turning and thinking about some 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 of this while I was getting reference for a book that I'm writing at the moment and I've just been so totally in the zone this week and the words have just been coming and I've really been sort of deepening my question around the whole law of distraction not the law of attraction and this idea that thoughts don't always become things that what you dream you can actually bring into physical actualization. And that's a very different aspect of, or, or a different perspective in how we actually create our lives on purpose rather than um, you know, thinking that it's outside of us and envisioning that we know what our desires are and we can use visualization and, and a as a method or a means, just like walking meditation or mindfulness or whatever it is that kind of floats your boat to really envision it and taste it with all your senses. You have to smell it and touch it and taste everything, which is where I think vision boarding doesn't really bring in the, all the elements of what you're thinking, what you're, you're dreaming into reality, because I think we're not using all of our senses, all the normal and the subtle senses. So I just wanted to kind of check in and ask you, what are, you, what are your thoughts about uh, things becoming uh, thoughts becoming things or manifestation or visioning where you've had some big dreams because to me life is a dream um, you know are we really awake or are we hooked into the matrix or is this whole thing just a, another reality <laughs> or an illusion of, of our own dreaming um, so yeah I'm, I kind of feel like I'm rambling a little bit but if this piqued your curiosity a little bit um, I'd love to learn what you know about what if thoughts become things and what your sort of shift in perspective is of how you're piercing time or how you're bending time and shape shifting and unhooking from this whole illusion that we're not powerful enough or we're not gifted enough to bring in, in and through intentional creativity or envisioning what you really want to create as your living legacy in the physical because we have physical bodies and it wouldn't be as much fun if I didn't speak of this this whole manifesting idea because people often say oh you know I want to manifest money or I want to manifest a lover and if you look at the true definition of manifestation it means that it that it becomes that you bring it into physical form. So if you're saying, I want to, I want to manifest money, you're saying, I want that this comes in. And it doesn't really make sense. So I often wonder if that's the part where perhaps we are kind of screwing ourselves because we can't meditate ourselves into abundance. We need to take the, in, in, the action and we need to do the training. And I think this is where manifestation becomes a bit sticking, sticky for a lot of people because they're looking at it as something that's out of outside of them and I think if we start tightening up and and get really really focused and clear in what it is that we want to bring in that that can really change how things start to show up in your reality and that type of perspective um, is a little different isn't it so look at it this way um, you're doing this all the time actually because, you know, think about when you were a kid and, I mean, you thought there was a monster under your bed or, um, you know, think about there was a boogeyman in your room or, or maybe there was an intruder in the house and, and your heart starts beating and your hands got really sweaty 
and and you holding your breath and you're keeping really still and you're convinced that there is a boogeyman under your bed or there's um, a robber in the house. And I've had times like that when I have been totally convinced that that it was really real and true. And my nervous system, which is natural, it responds to thought. So your nervous system, um, you know, what does it do? It starts to create an emotion. What is an emotion? It's energy in motion, emotion. It creates your feelings. And this energy in motion is what creates your life or your reality of, of life. When you, where you are so sure, right? Hi, Christina, you're so sure there's a robber in your bed, um, in, in your house, and you and you grab your book or you grab your cup of coffee and you're, you're ready to attack. And um, you can imagine that as, as, as when you were a child. I mean, I remember having those nightmares of, um, you know, people chasing me in my dreams or the shadows in the curtains. And there was this knocking noise that sounded like someone was trying to get in. And meanwhile... Um, it's just a, the shadow of a tree and a branch that's knocking against the window. And before you know it, you're already in that fight flight response. You're in that space of imagining that the worst thing is going to happen. And you want to be using imagination for you, not against you. Um, you know, we don't want to get contracted and get into this place of paranoia or fight flight freeze that shuts us down in that irrational fear. You know, that's where the brain fog and the headaches and the exhaustion and all the disease and anxiety or these sort of panic attacks start to um, start to create disharmony in your life. And I've, you know, I know a lot about um, panic attacks and, and spaces of depression and imagining the worst. And, you know, a lot of that has to do with um, living in the country that I live in. Um, you know the the collective is very much fear based and and it and our bodies are pumping out cortisol and norepinephrine and it's flooding our brains it's flooding our nervous system all the time and these neurotoxins just become this big toxic soup and you're wondering why you're exhausted or you can't sleep or maybe you know life isn't uh, as full of a, a, and and happy as you'd like it to be and you're pretty shut down you know you're you're so switched on in this this fight flight all the time that life actually starts to happen to you um you know rather than life coming through you and you know going back to perhaps that that whole concept of irrational fear as a little kid when you had you, you knew there was something under your bed and you scream for your parents and they came in and they they were annoyed and they get you out of the bed and they switch on the light and they look show you under the bed there's nothing there and they tell you everything's okay and tuck you back in and switch you switch switch the light off and leave you back again and you you knew how to neuromodulate modulate your system because you you were told that you were safe and you were tucked back in and you were told there is nothing to worry about so, um, you know, this is where your body knew how to come off this hyper aroused state and um, you went up from that, that sort of hyper arousal and you, your body's supposed to go up and down like that. Oh, there's a pesky fly here. So, you know, remember back to those days where it's just like everything was fine and you went back to sleep and it was all forgotten until the next time you had a crazy nightmare or um, there was some other new weird new shape that showed up or your neighbor had some horror story um, and your imagination ran, literally runs away with you again, right? It wants you to run away. So um, is this making sense? Give me a yes if, if you're... If you're following me but you know this is how we bring dreams and visions into reality when we're using imagination for us rather than against us this is poetry and and you know the Wright brothers making airplanes uh, you know bending metal and putting this thing in the air that flied and we're all born with this capacity capacity to use our gifts in the world and use it for us or against us um, you know and think about what a visionary is you know, um, we all know how to vision because we're using our imagination all the time. But instead of you using that as our inner state, all these amazing creatives, the Einsteins and the Beethovens and the Henry Fords, um, they weren't putting it outside of us. 
outside of them. They were really going inward with the process of envisioning. So think about, you know, that boogie monster again, or the what if, you know, what if I get fired, or what if my wife leaves me? We start to live as if that's the truth, and it becomes a self-fulfilling pro uh, prophecy. And in its most extreme cases, this is where you see people that are hypervigilant all the time, and it's that sort of obsessive compulsive behavior, or and mystery diseases start showing up because our minds are so flooded with this cortisol all the time, and so powerful that what we, what we, the body does follow the mind, right? We we create our worst imagining. So does you know does that make sense that your nervous system and your brain doesn't know the difference between a real threat and, and an imagined threat. It just responds to the most dominant of the thoughts of what you're imagining. And any idea that's either feared, ah, oh, there's a butterfly in the house. Um, so yeah, you know, whatever way, shape or form you start imagining, whatever is the dominant idea is going to, it's going to show up. It's going to show up in the most appropriate and convenient form, meaning that whatever is dominant is going to manifest itself in the same way um, that it's a dominantly or emotionally held idea that there is a robber in the house or a boogeyman under your bed. And most people are really living under this sort of false reality that they're actually not good enough, that they're limited by um, you know, their education or they're limited by the way they live or how old they are or how much um, education they've had or the trauma that they've they've suffered or the experiences that were life-changing or perhaps um, life-threatening and this is where my work with uh, neuromodulation and neuroplasty and Chinese medicine has, has really served me well and, and serves my clients very well because you have to look at the body as a holistic thing and and if you look at the kidneys um, you know it's its natural pathology is to is to um, on a consciousness level is um, existential fear. Uh, you know, it's the survival stuff. Um, but the the brain and the meridian related meridian pathways um, and the kidneys themselves, they're right on the adrenals. That's that is what gives us life. That is what gives us the vitality and the excitement to actually generate and create our big beautiful imagination and bring our vision into the world. And the, the, the kidneys and the brain, the aspects of the brain related to the kidneys and the bladder don't know the difference between fear and excitement. So a really good question to ask um, when you feel butterflies in your stomach or you're feeling a little bit um, nervous about something is to ask, is this excitement or is it fear? And just pause and allow yourself to feel that organically in your body. Remember, we can't heal what we what we don't feel. And this is where we often misidentify intense living. So having the intensity of feeling everything and feeling your life and being in touch with your life and smelling the sweet stuff and 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 where we're where you can't change happiness that you can't measure it out we have to have the full range of feelings so we numb out because we don't want to feel that kind of kind of intensity and we misidentify it as pain rather than that knowing that that's the gift of being human and having a body and having a brilliant brain and the spirit of life is within you you're here having a human experience so you know what does that mean is is have a look at you know think about it um think about the ways you're limiting yourself right now and you'll probably see that it isn't true at all but you've convinced yourself that it's true and you're living out this reality in the same way that you think there's the boogeyman or the burglar in the house but it's really not true it's a rational fear okay and then the other idea is you know when people are talking about the law of attraction and, and people say, oh, well, you know, your dream is already in effect. Um, you know, Neville God, Goddard talks about thinking of versus thinking from. So if you look at thinking of something, the imagination, um, that you haven't embodied it. You haven't become one with it yet. So you're constantly in the pursuit of happiness. You're constantly 
in pursuit of that hopefully maybe one day if I'm lucky and I pray hard enough or I'm blessed or I win the lotto or I meditate enough, something outside of me, some idea that I haven't got emotionally involved with enough and using the your mind and, and your imagination, the same capacity that you're, you think you're being cheated on or that you think you're, you know, all these things that are that are happening, you know, it's actually quite a joke because we go into assumption and then we defend that, oh, well, I don't have the education or you don't understand. You don't understand that it doesn't work like that. You know, I'm not like those people, but it's not even this real thing. You know, if you really had that same way of defending, if you put as much energy into defending the, the belief that you can't, um, you'd probably be living a completely different life right now. You know, is this making sense? You know, if you can start uh, looking at relating of thinking of rather than thinking into, um, you know, this sort of idea of relativity and contrast is if you can imagine the worst case scenario by your thinking, imagine if you started using your imagination for you rather than against you. You know, and is this something that you're willing to move forward in action or actualize into physical form because it excites you and it lights you up? And it's just like, well, why not? You know, why can't, you know, what if, what if I do? What if I do this right now? You know, it's a relativity uh, around time and space. You know, time is a construct. So what if it's about being where you want to be and not quite being there yet and looking at that luminal space in between of looking at what do I want to create in the next month or the next year or the next uh, five or ten years from now and looking at closing the gap between your imagination and where your courage is because you were born courageous. You just forgotten because your imagination's got the better, the better of you, right? So, you know, what if it can you does it make sense? It, it's it doesn't happen outside of you. It happens inside of you. So you're looking at the singular, you know, the only one that can bring it in. There's a horrible fly here. It's using your gifts and your imagination and your intelligence and your body's innate wisdom to actually create from the inside and then reflect it like this big, beautiful projector. And there is a meridian. It's called a projector at the back of your head where we literally are reversing anything anyway. You know, that's how our optic nerve, nerve works as well. So if everything is connected to everything, do, your, do you become your thoughts? Because it always comes back to how you're feeling in that particular moment. And I mean feeling with a whole body and a whole mind. You know, look, ask yourself, how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling disempowered right now? Because it, it's quite disempowering to say, well, hopefully, maybe one day in the future, this thing that I'm constantly in pursuit of that's so out of reach, it's like the dangling the carrot, right? Um, and you never quite get it. Instead of looking at how can I choose to be happy in this present moment with where I am and what I'm creating and how abundant I already am. Instead of thinking I can't be happy or I can't have that much until I've done the work and I've killed myself getting to it and my kids are grown or I can't be happy and I can't have that until um, I have all the other things in line. And that really is what living the gifted life is really about that I've been speaking so much about. You know, it's just like, where are you living of the vision rather than from the vision? You know, that's the difference between being a visionary and envisioning your life. And looking at the at you know from the future dream, that is that that is that when you assume the feeling, you fulfill the wish. You know it sounds a little weird, but if you break it down into the same content text of that you know if I'm going to get you know if I'm thinking I'm going to get fired or that there is a robber in my house or that there's you know there's something under my bed that's gonna gonna get me. Um, or you know somebody that's doing that now. And yeah, maybe that is a little bit of where you are right now, Christine. But when you start thinking from, that's the visionary. You know, that's, I already see the, like the Wright brothers. I already see the plane flying in the air, even though nobody, nobody imagines that it's possible. You know, or Henry Ford that built a, a car out of hemp and that was fueled by hemp and it was clean. He didn't stop. Because someone said rubbish, you know, that, it, that it's not possible. And even when he went on to do, create the, the car, it, 
everybody around him said it's impossible. And he said he'll make sure he gets he sees it done. And he told the people that were working from him to go back to work. You know, he was thinking from, from, not of. He was thinking of that if he could move in the direction of his dream, of his vision to make this automobile, that it would happen. But he and he was willing to do the training. He didn't stop until he made that car. He embodied it with every fiber and cell and essence of his being. And, um, you know, I think Wayne Dyer um, talks about that. He says, you don't get what you want, you get what you are. And I think that's the misconception with the law of attraction, that it's a need, that it's a want. It's, I'm going to think about this thing, and I'm going to put pictures on my vision board, and maybe if I look at it long enough, it'll actually, you know, arrive at my front door. And there is no feeling in that, right? It's outside of you. It's an extraneous um, focus. You're not looking at how can I bring this into existence. And how can I bring it in? Because it, everything already exists. There is no original thought. It's all out, It's all there for the person that's willing to do the training and get the skills and bring it into this reality. And and that's how your nervous system responds. Poof, man. Puffy fly. Um, you know how you act is going to determine. There's there's. Oh my gosh, there's flying ants everywhere. What a beautiful totem while I'm doing this video. Um, flying ants all over the place. So, you know, I just want you to consider that there have been so many instances where you've thought your imagination has got the better of you and you go into the worst case scenario and you live your life as if it's happening now, but it's actually not happening. You know, that's the evidentiary contrivances that hold you back from taking the risks, small risks with great courage. And you just don't try at all. So you can use your mind, you can use your imagination, your nervous system, your brain to embody an idea that doesn't maybe exist on the earth plane yet. It exists. It just hasn't been brought down yet. Um, I don't know if you remember that quote by Al Al Albert um, Einstein that said, you know, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. That's the gift of life. That's the power of bringing into existence, into this physical earth plane, everything that you imagine possible and everything that everyone else tells you is not possible to do and doing it anyway. You know, that's the difference between the visioneer and the, and, and the follower. That's the difference between the leader, the leaders, the ones that take the lead and the ones that wait back and wait and see. You know, so, so how can you start changing the way that you see yourself living into your legacy? Well, start believing that it's possible. Belief starts when you, you know, either through the choice of irrational or, ration, or rational thought. Even though I'm afraid I'm going to go and see what is possible. What can I create from this space? You know, rather than saying, I can't do it because I'm too scared. So I, I hope that you choose to live into your life, into your what ifs, into your imagination, into that beautiful dream state of knowing that you're here to live a gifted life and no one needs to save you. Um, praying harder, manifesting more, putting more pictures on your, video, your vision board isn't going to get you what you want. You're going to get you what you want and you're the only one that can get you there. No one else can do that for you because it's your vision and they're your gift. So, you know, another thing I'd love you to consider is maybe you are in a time of your life right now where you're feeling a little numbed out or limited or you're doubting your capacities and maybe you don't know how you're going to get yourself out of where you are. And I know, Christina, we've had these kind of conversations before, you know, where you're kind of feeling like you're holding back. And, and it's not about doing more work. It's about feeling into your life, listening to your life. And what I'm inviting you to consider, all of you, if you're listening to this, that that's how we, ki we kill our souls, right? When we shut down imagination, it's actually impossible anyway. But if you, could, if you could just have faith, Abraham Lincoln says, it's not a measure of faith to believe in the things that you can see. True faith is to believe in the things that you cannot see. You know, Abraham Lincoln said that. You know, I mean, hey, you got to believe in the things that, that are not visible to the, to, the, to the eye. You have to look at your blind spots. You have to look at 
what is it that is willing to come through me onto this physical plane? Um, you know, I just love that idea of intentional creativity where you actually just start to live and you start to act and you listen to your guts and you listen to your life and you start to activate these spidey senses and you're going to start seeing opportunities that people cannot see because you're living beyond the veil. You're actually, you're living in, in an imaginal world of possibilities rather than shutting yourself down. So start using your imagination to, to your advantage. Um, you'll get what you want when you do that. You know, don't use it against you because that's what we're trained to do, be good problem solvers so we keep creating problems from the, the, the doom and the gloom and the fear and the what if, from the worst part of imagining, the worst case scenario. And, you know, it's like, don't stop. You know, don't, don't, don't go to imagining that, oh my gosh, I can't ask that question. You know, who, who am I to ask that lovely, lovely guy at the, at the bar um, uh, for a drink because I'm going to get rejected or, oh my God, I'm not even going to start writing my book because I'm going to, it's going to get rejected again. Or, you know, I, I'm, I can't bear the rejection of 69. You keep going. You keep going. You know, and this is where the training is so important in, in my work is unless you're doing the, the, the training, if you're, until you're doing the rehearsal, the performance is 10%, right? Your life is the performance. Your life is the adventure. You have to confront your fears. You have to train when you don't want to train. You got to do the, the hard work. It doesn't just land in your back, in, in your in, in your lab. Um, your body, your body will always make you right. So train your body to support you, or imagination to support you in 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 carrying you into the training until you get it done. You know, start looking at who am I not to do this? What is what is at risk for me not to do this? How can this be greater than I could ever imagine possible? And then go, go, do the experiment until you ace it. You know, just train your brain, train your mind. Um, you know, this is where imagination actually starts to work for you. And this is where, where, you know, all those years, if I think about from, you know, from the minute I came out of the womb, my mother was a, a springbok swimmer. My father was a... a very famous uh, rugby player, and the discipline is what made them successful, right? They got out there and they trained. They trained because they wanted to be the best that they could. So that was ingrained in me from a very, very early age. A lot of other things were ingrained that, and programmed that, that didn't do me so well. But, you know, I'm so grateful now looking back on my life that those those hours of swimming up and down a swimming pool eight hours a day on some on a supramental on a subconscious level when i went out into the world and got the training and and got my first job and then my second job and and started to see what i liked and what i didn't like and and I followed that. And when one of my bosses said to me, oh, you know, um, you need to go and work for yourself because you don't handle authority uh, very well. And I didn't think twice about leaving my job because, hey, what is authority? It's about being the author of your own life. And I didn't know that then. I don't know. I was all of 23 or something. <laughs> but I left. And I didn't for one minute go and use my imagination against me because the whole time I'd been training myself to do other things. Uh, I might have had a day job, but I was making couture outfits. And if someone said they wanted a christening dress, I always said yes. I always said yes, and then I learned how to do it. I always found a way to do it. And then I'd started painting, and I'd started doing a whole lot of other things. And I started, um, it was in the days before decoupage, and uh, wall treatments were a big, big deal. I took myself off. I learned, I, I did classes. And I and I painted marble and, and stone and granites and all sorts of different types of wood, wood grainings and all these things while I was holding down a day job um, because I wanted to do the training that I could say yes to anything. And then I found out how to do it, and I'm so grateful for that because if it's that training that kept me looking at what if what if I try, what have I got to you know what have I got to gain by doing this, more experience. So I kind of 
you know, a lot of people say to me, I'm very strong and, I have, and I'm very courageous. And I never really saw that as courage before because it was just part of how I was, how I was brought up in a family of very competitive um, brothers, sisters. All my sisters were number one at, you know, whatever sport they did. My sister Debbie went to the, the World Games. Um, she opened up America to a whole bunch of divers um, to follow her. Uh, into America that that you know it's like I don't for one minute think that that she ever said oh no I can't do this you know um, so yeah I don't know where I was going with that other than to say don't give up go into the imagination you've been born with this 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 dream this dreaming state of imagining everything that is the art of creation and you can't do that when you're coming from a low vibration or fear of using your imagination against you. And it, they've proven this. You know, science is starting to back up the benefits of meditation and imagination. And and um, one of the modalities that I trained in called Mindscape, uh, they you go through this process just like a, it, these are athletes go through this this thing of imagining themselves running the race. And they're hooked, wired up to, you know, all sorts of monitors and things. And and the heartbeat goes up and their muscles are pushing lactic acid and their whole biochemistry changes. And they're actually physically running their the race in their imagination. And that is the training. Okay, when I when I snapped my Achilles tendon three times and I couldn't I couldn't exercise for a long time, I used to go into my workshop and I used to exercise my muscles. And you know the guy, my my um, the, the my doctor at the Sports and Science Institute in Cape Town, he couldn't believe how quick the last rehab on my Achilles tendon was, and I and I'm I'm sure it had to do with using my imagination to to quicken up my recovery, right? I started using my my mind to heal my body faster, and I think that's what spontaneous healing is I think that is that feeling part of how people go into remission and they have um, you know incredible spontaneous healings and I think that is the power of imagination of, of using the mind to create what you want um, am I still freezing I'm having to what I'm having to something Okay, I don't have my glasses on. Okay, good. Yeah, listen to it again, Christine. And if you have any any questions, just let me know. So that's kind of what I've been I've been um, thinking of. Sorry, my hair looks a mess tonight. I just got out the shower and it's very fuzzy. Um, but you know, just remember, we don't get what we think about. We get what we think and internalize. We have to own own the experience for ourselves. You know, it's the energies and the emotions that are sending this neural pathway up to our brain to tell us what to respond to. You know, we don't get what we want. We get what we are. So that's my take on, on law of attraction or distraction, because it is. When you use imagination against you, you're distracting yourself from living your, your, into the what if, into your creation, into your gift. So if this resonates with you, um, if you're wondering how you can tap more into your natural resources and bring your gifts out into the world, into a, a beautiful community that sees you, that gets this, that speaks your language, that, that imagines and dreams alongside you and that are doing amazing things already, um, the Gifted Life Project starts on 1st of February. Um, and there's other ways that you can work with me. So um, I can't wait to see what you bring in with your unique gifts and capacities and your amazing imagination. So go use it. Go have, imagine yourself having the best, most beautiful, brilliant, phenomenal evening or rest of the day wherever you are. And let me know what your, your thoughts are on the law of attraction and what you what you think is what you become um i'm curious to know um what this brought up for you all right guys love you lots bye Mwah.